between Vietnam to the east, Laos to the north, and Thailand to the west, Cambodia is a land of vast plains and rivers. <laughs> Poverty bites hardest in rural areas where two thirds of the population live. But if you own a fertile cow, you can have a chance at a better life. Cattle play an important role in Cambodian rural society as asset storage, as draft animals, fertiliser providers and of course beef. But for many families, owning a cow is way beyond their means until now. Cows for Cambodia is the country's biggest agricultural charity. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. It's a bank, but instead of money, it loans pregnant cows to poor villagers. Can she show us her cow? Uh, and if we can lend them a cow, we don't give them a cow. We lend them a pregnant cow. And they then have to look after it. And when the calf is born, they own the calf. New calf. So beautiful. Okay, four days. Four days old. Four days old. Wow. So that cow can come back to the charity when that's weaned. And she keeps that weaner. We wean it for her, we, we vaccinate it for her. Queenslander Wallace Gunthorpe has been a cattleman all his life. But after handing the reins of the property over to his son, Wallace needed a new challenge. And a trip to Cambodia gave him just that. She loves the car. I mean, it doesn't get much better. I was doing some consulting work in Vietnam and we took a side trip into Cambodia. On that first trip, I heard about the charity Cows for Cambodia. I like travelling. Cattle is my thing. So I was keen to help. That was seven years ago, and now working with a charity is a big part of my life. The people receiving the cows are the people who are poor. Their income just only like a from hand to the mouth. So by just clang clang. By just So by tom tom. What did you ask her? Is she like a, a, a really is a happy, big big happy? They know that one day will be worth seven hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars. So when someone gets sick or there's there's ill health in the family, they can't they don't want to, but they could sell it. Yep. But they keep a heifer calf, she has a baby, and so they go on, you know, and they can end up with four or five cows. Yep. It's amazing. This is good news. It's good news. There's good news. It's pretty cool to think this fertilizer actually came from South Australia, made in Australia. And you guys are going to be spreading it out on the charity farm to grow grass for the cows. The charity was started by South Australian TV and radio personality, Andrew Cosi Costello. Cows in Cambodia purely exist just to equal the playing field. And even if it's just a little bit, then I reckon we're sort of half one. One of the best feelings of my life is when we get to tell the people that they are going to receive a cow. And that sometimes their eyes well up, sometimes they're shocked. It's just, it's just crazily beautiful. And I'll never get sick of doing that. I love the fact that I'm here flying the flag for my country. And I used to be someone that was like, nah, always just donate to Australian charities and bugger everyone else. But this place opened up my heart and made me realise how wrong that is. I'm very embarrassed to have thought that. Where do you get the money from? So we rely solely on donations. So 100%. So we've had no financial help from the Cambodian government or Australian government. So you've got 80 Australian tourists here today. Yep. Are most of them donors? Yeah, yeah, definitely. These guys are seeing it firsthand, like they're living and breathing it. And they're also very, very cheap labour, free. I think that's a genius move, actually. It, absolutely. Cozzy's good at raising money, but knows nothing about cattle. Could you have done this without Wallace? Nah, Wallace is like a gun. He's built the cattle shed. He's bought us my dream, which was Australian genetics. And then he rattled the tin up in Queensland and, and nudged a few Brahmin breeders. And we ended up with half a dozen Brahmins that we've got over here for free. But we just couldn't believe it. You're only as successful as the people you're surrounded by. And 
the day we crossed paths, like, someone was looking down at me because it was very special. Wow. It's big. The shed is very impressive. Yeah, it's 60 metres by 40 metres. It's probably, the, I think, the second biggest in Cambodia. And how do you use it? Are the cattle in here all the time or part of the time? No, well, there's cows out here now in the, in, the, in the pasture. We have cows in the shed. They rotate round and they, they don't spend all their time in the shed. Only in the, in the wet season when the monsoon's on and there's 72 inches in four months. So they spend time in here and they get green shop. And then now in the dry season, they get to go out for three quarters of the day and they come back in, they get fed again when they come back into the shed. And how important are cattle in Cambodia? It's, uh, well, we use it, it's, it's a bit like having a Ferrari in the shed, you know, like if you've got a cow tied up in front of your house, you've sort of arrived. We visited just before the monsoon rains arrived. With temperatures around 40 degrees, there were skinny cattle everywhere skinny cattle are unlikely to get pregnant and if they do they struggle to deliver a live healthy calf this is a gush of it if we don't get pregnancies here we've got nothing to move forward with so very important that we have our protein up our cattle in good condition but not fed properly not bred properly we're in trouble irrigation is rare here but wallace thought it was essential to drought proof the farm Irrigated king grass is cut fresh every day. We have a protein pellet there, about 12% protein, uh, with all the goodies in it, so we add that as well. Trying to pick these cows up to make sure they cycle and get pregnant in this shed. The retired Brahmin breeders' two biggest challenges were lifting the shockingly low fertility rates and improving bloodlines. This pen are six Australian Brahmins, four bulls and two heifers, including one donated by Wallace's son. Wallace, why bring Australian cattle genetics here? The big reason is to in improve the quality of the local cattle. Um, these cattle here haven't had new blood probably for, I don't know, hundreds of years or longer. We've lifted a herd from 50% pregnancy to 65% just with better management and better protein. So we think now with better genetics, we can lift them another 15, you know, we'll get to 85%, I hope. Keep them coming. Everybody in. That's good. See, this cow's down in condition. She, she got a little, she had a calf off her not long ago, so she's probably not in calf. Yeah, you can see she's a bit hippie, you know, we don't like them like that, mm. but we get a few. Right on, mate. Don't let it go. Another good one. That's awesome. Mr. Jet runs the charity's farm. I know exactly what power is because I was born in uh, poor families, not a rich families. How many cows do you think you can give out this year? I think uh, around uh, 30 to 40 cows. Next year, you can see many, many of the families we get a cow from us. Can a chicken or a goat or a pig help a family just like a cow can? Yes, of course they can. For example, if they see the old families, like when it's like, a, you're like an 80 years old, we cannot give the cow to them, right? So, so we have to uh, decide to, to do other things, to give some, or give like a, some other animals, maybe like a ducks or a goat, or whatever, which is not harmful to them. Back in the village, there's more good news to share. Key Sok has done such a good job looking after her cow, the charity's confident a second will be in good hands with her daughter, Hai. Yes, she said yes, she will be able to look after her cow well. Yes, she always like uh, look and learn after from her mum. Hai's husband died when their baby was 10 days old. Having cows it will change uh, her life because she uh, tried to make like uh, some money for her child. Okay. 
Not far away is the Chuan family, a big success story for the charity. This is their third calf. They sold their first when COVID hit and Mrs Chuan lost her job. It's, uh, it was really like hard uh, decision for him, for the families, because they wanted to uh, like make a business to buy like uh, sugarcane process uh, machines and they got $500 from the first calf selling. Charity founder Cozzy wants families to build a small herd and only sell calves in emergencies. We all know how tough COVID was. It's kind of cool that they had a cow out of the charity to pull that lever to survive like they did. One family's future has changed. Simple as that. Wallace has made many friends here in Cambodia, but one lady is special. Lai was left partially blind after being beaten by the Khmer Rouge, so she can't look after a cow, but the charity still found a way to help her. How are you, my dear? Hi. There's no one more disadvantaged. I mean, she's blind, she's got 10% hearing. Her husband was killed by the Khmer Rouge. She, they tried to kill her, and every time you see her, she laughs and she's happy to tell you the story. And she's just an inspiration. This is Lai's old house. Next to it is the one the charity built. She told Mr. Jet it rescued her from a hard life and gave her a new happy one. Mr. Wallace. Today, Mr. Jet and Wallace have good news. We have a cow for you and a cow for your granddaughter or whoever looks after you. Yeah, hello. Two cows. <laughs> Is that something that strikes you about the people here, that they might not have much, but they're very happy? They seem to be happy, and I know with that hearing aid she's got to give her that 10% hearing, the neighbours all chipped in and raised $15 so she could hear. I mean, that's pretty good community spirit. What's it like to be greeted like that? She obviously loves you. That's, that's, <laughs> you're going to do it to me, aren't you? First 68 people that were lent cows were all illiterate, signed on the thumbprint, and not one person reneged on the deal. Everyone honoured the deal because they see it as a window out of poverty for their family. And we try and select women that have children, and then the kicker is that those children have to go to our school. Up to you. And this is the school the charity built. Cosy came across Salas Van teaching 16 kids in a shed. Now we're going to learn about some body parts. You know it? The next day we came back with like um, pens and pencils and textures and um, textbooks to give them. And then we came back the next time we bought them all new desks and the school's just grown and grown and grown. And now we have like 320 students that go here and they get free education. I think the English is very important for all the, the kids. If they know English, they can get a good job in the future. Yeah. Can they earn more if they speak English? Absolutely. So if a Cambodian child can leave school and be, and be able to speak English, then on average their salary will be double a non-English speaking. One reason literacy rates and school attendance are so low in Cambodia is the education system was all but destroyed during the Cambodian genocide. 75% of all teachers and 96% of all tertiary students were killed and schools were closed. Cambodia's gradually recovered, but the psychological scars remain. Instead, you know, it really affects the whole uh, population of Khmer people at that period because uh, a Cambodian country was changed from like a, you know, like democratic country to be like, a, you know, it's like a killing field, you know. Everywhere is a killing field in that period. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
now going to school can change a child's life. If I couldn't go to these schools, probably I cannot get a scholarship to study in the university. It also helped me to complete my future dream because I want um, a programmer. So it helped me a lot with that. Thank you so much for all the Australia make the school for all of the students can got the scholarship and got the good future. Thank you so much. The charity's next school will be an agricultural one based at the farm. 80, 90 percent of people in Cambodia rely on agriculture for a living, so it makes sense to have an agricultural school um, right under our bloody nose. We would love to think we can have that agricultural school going and educate Khmer children, and I do believe that our future managers will come out of that system. I really do. A highlight of this trip for Wallace was seeing how well the six Australian cattle were settling in. Their arrival was such a milestone, Cozzy threw them a shed warming. They didn't know it, but in Cambodia, big events are marked by the presence of Buddhist monks. The new cows were blessed by the cattle. The Australian donors didn't miss out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. When you come in, John? Oh, yeah, yeah, when? What, what time? Once the Ag College yes, is set yeah, up, I'm Cosby coming has at, uh, two more goals. For okay. cow numbers to uh, ten, ten, to 1,000 and for locals to take over and run the farm. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll come in at Which 10 is why okay. this model yeah, we'll is see you designed soon. around bye bye. being self-sustainable. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to set up a facility that will self-fund itself so I don't have to get any more donations anymore. That's like the long-term plan. Until locals have enough knowledge, Wallace will keep visiting. But he knows they need a full-time Wallace. That search has begun, but stepping back from what he calls his charity addiction will be hard. I've made a lot of friends in this community that people I would never have come across. And it's been a big adventure for an old man. Tell her thank you. I love helping people that I know cannot help me. It's a big kicker, I think. It's, it's, it's all one-way traffic. Uh, but what I get out of it is a bit of this. Don't you do it to me again.